Okay, so hello and uh, welcome to this Horse Fest webinar. Horse Tribe webinar, sorry, I must get my horse and my, my fest and my tribe the right way around. So thanks very much for joining us. We're here today, um, Liz Daniels is going to take over in a minute. Um, but just a little background about Horse Tribe. So um, obviously we're part of the Horse Fest business um, and the goal is to create a community um, for, for horse loving folk um, to provide lots of free information um, and great material um, and also to conduct these webinars at least two a month um, ongoing. So um, I'm going to um, hand over to Thea for a moment who's actually going to just talk through the tech um, and, and then we'll, we'll get um, chatting to Liz. Brilliant, thank you. So the first thing is just to let you know that this is being recorded and this is so that you can watch, watch it back anytime you want, as many times as you want and if you're anything like us, um, you like to dial into a video just to double check what you were doing is right afterwards. So this will always be available for you. Um, secondly, just to let you know that uh, the chat will have been disabled and that's so that you can focus on putting your questions into the Q&A box. So ask as many questions whenever you want all the way through. You, want, you can ask them as yourself or you can um, tick the box that says anonymous and um, Liz will ask them, at, uh, sorry, answer them as she goes along. But there also are a couple of spots where we'll stop and just check in for questions. So tap away on the Q&A or we can unmute and you can ask the question yourself live. And then secondly, on the right hand side, and if you can see, there's a picture of me smiling away as usual on the right hand side. And there's a grey line in between me and the example of the slide. So if you look on your screen, if you want to make um, the slides bigger, you can just drag that line a little bit to the right. Or if you want to make Liz bigger as she speaks, you can drag that line, click and drag that to the left. I think that's everything on the tech spot. So without further ado, we're going to hand you over to the lovely Liz Daniels. Um, and we're absolutely delighted to welcome you for some more top tips, which we're going to try out. Uh, uh, I'm going to try it out in a couple of weekends, actually. That's when I'm next platting, for sure. Um, That's exciting. Liz, are platting tomorrow, aren't you? So we'll hand over to you to say more about you and why you're platting tomorrow. And the yeah, top thank you. I've actually been platting thank today. You. So, um, yeah, I was putting put into good use all my uh, all my own tips. But um, before we start that, a little bit about me. Um, I am um, a former professional groom. I absolutely loved grooming. I was so lucky to work for so many amazing people and that created a lot of opportunities. Um, I groomed for Jeff Billington for a few years, which was just amazing. Um, I got to travel quite a lot with him and his horses. Um, I've done lots of lots of different things. Always knew that I wanted to work um, with horses in, in some form. Um, I now work for the British Grooms Association, where I do their marketing and PR and a lot with the members. Um, and I have my own company called Custard PR. And I work for Riders Minds, which is an online uh, mental health and well-being kind of portal and, and help. Um, in my spare time, not so spare time, um, I run equity and confidence camps with my best friend Lou um, and we very much share the ethos of the horse um, tribe and the horse fest ladies where we like to have lots of fun and like it to be educational. Um, so yes, please do ask questions as we go, go along. Um, as you can see there, I live in Scotland. I'm not from not from Scotland. I'm from Middle England, um, but I live in Scotland with uh, my family, um, two little people and horses and my dog Pepper and a cat called Boris. So that's pretty much, um, yeah, pretty much what there is to know about me. So competition turnout, it doesn't really matter if you're preparing for competition. It could be a clinic, um, you know, or um, a lesson or anything there'll be elements of this that you can take away no matter um, what you're doing um, I, I'm saying preparation is key I've been running around today like an absolute headless chicken for two hours because I did not listen to my own advice um, so tomorrow I, I'm off to a competition which is the first one I've done 
well since we've been back um allowed i'm super excited but i have to say i was quite rusty and um, so all these that i'm going to tell you are things that i should have done and probably didn't do until today but we'll we'll go with do as i say not as i not as i do and um, so we're going to look at um the week before and the day before on the day we're going to touch on tack and transport a reminder to remember your passport all the time and make obviously make sure your vaccinations are up to um up to scratch food is essential for us all and for ponies and support because at horse tribe we're all about supporting people and um, so as i said if you've got any questions as we're going along and you are on the live chat then you can just ask and um, ask away so a quick quiz when it comes to turnout do you turn out like the pros are you quite confident are you winging it or the last time i tried to plat it didn't end well um, so we can pop that um, Q and A on the screen if we can. I don't, I don't know which lady is doing the tech um, for this. Here we go, super deeper. It says hosts and panelists cannot vote. I think I would quite like to say I was turning out like like a pro, but today it felt a bit like I was winging it. So um, yes, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if the plats are still in tomorrow anyway. So there's no right or wrong answer. And if you want to have a have a vote, winging it, excellent. Well, at least we're honest about that, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, so that's okay. That's exactly why we are here, which is um, which is super duper. So let's go to our next uh, next slide. So the week before, we're going to cover brushing. Main and tail tidy, um, washing the main and tail and locate everything, which is exactly what I did not um, do today. So, oops, apologies. So if you start with the main like this, it's never, ever, ever going to end well. So we've got a number of things that we can do to tidy mains. Um, if you didn't watch the last session, um, you can go back and, um, and watch that. It was all about um, spring kind of turnout. So just a, a post spring um, tidy up. So we went into quite a lot of detail about um, obviously tidying manes and tails and the feathers and everything else. But um, we're going to need to do something with this mane. But if you arrive on your show jet day looking at this mane, you're going to have a slight um, kind of panic to yourself because this is not going to get good, um, good plats in. So we've got a variety of options. Pull it, we can use... Um, the tools that are marketed as humane, we can use thinning scissors, normal scissors, blades, clippers. Obviously, clippers is a little drastic, um, but you know we have those as an option if you wish to to hog your horse. Um, my point of this slide being like, just think about the week you know before, because um, you're going to need to do something with that. Same with the tails. Um, we need to just tidy up. If you have a tail like the one on the left. Um, and you want to, to pull it um, or humanely trim it, then it's probably, again, not best doing it the day before. Give yourself um, a few days. Feathers as well. We probably want to trim our feathers after winter. And um, the whiskers, um, I put be aware. It's just because of the new rule changes that are coming in and um, surrounding the removal of whiskers because they're sensory um, hairs. So the, the real take home message is um, if they're going to be sore and uncomfortable, you can trim the odd one, but pretty much leave them um, leave them alone. Um, and don't forget to trim your bridal path. If, if you have a bridal path, not everyone has a bridal path. That's total personal preference. But all this can be found in much more detail on um, the previous slides that we did. So I would always wash um, my mane and tails the week before. The reason that I do this is because that's the one and only time that I would wash the mane. Um, and the tail, um, especially if you've got a gray, it's really good practice just to keep on, on top of it. But it also means you can put a little bit of product um, through there and it saves time on the day because sometimes I like to double wash my tails just to really get, um, get, get the grease out. And if you are washing tails, then use, um, a spray you can use furniture polish in the tail that's a really good money saving um tip for you you can use fairy um washing fairy liquid washing up 
um kind of anything like that um to do that i've known people use like daz whiter than white on the on white tails just be really careful it doesn't obviously touch the um the dock but there's lots of lots of things you can do and then it will only need like a small wash the day um the day before as well so i quite like a product called super shine which i put through the tails and um, just to keep on top of them uh, but we'll go we'll have a little look at that um later so brushing here this was this photo got released yesterday actually of charlotte um dujardin brushing one of her horses um it's so nice to brush your horses it's, it has multiple benefits and um, it increases the circulation and promotes um you know the the hair it's also great for you just to have the opportunity um to thoroughly look over like for any lumps or bumps or anything that's not normally there but it's also quite a nice bonding time and generally horses really like to be brushed um i've said here it's all about the technique yes it really is um we um there's no point in brushing badly because you're just kind of wasting your time 10 minutes a day is all you need um and unless you've got a grey or a particularly disgusting pony, it usually removes the need for bathing. Um, my own routine would be a quick flick to remove any hair and mud before a ride, and then a five to ten minute decent brush after um, I've ridden. And we'll go through what what I use for that. But it saves so much time on competition um, days. Obviously, you need to wash any stable stains um, or any muddy bits, but. Um, generally we can get away without having to bath our horses unless they're really really dirty and, and grey um, so here I've got I'm going to show you on the next slide so my top brushing tips I only have four brushes well that's a big fat lie I have four brushes that I use on the body um, and um, a mane and tail brush so I have um, I have those in my grooming kit and obviously hoof pick um, as well but I really think you you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds on brushes, but equally you don't want really poor quality brushes because they don't actually do a brilliant job. Um, the trick to your brushes is keep them clean. Um, so wash them regularly, but also as you're brushing your horse, clean them with a curry comb as well. So I use quick long strokes. And as you finish on your down straight, flick the brush upwards because that takes the dirt and the grease away from the coat rather than just keeping it in the coat. Um, and then every two or three strokes, I try and, um, well, I don't try, I do clean my brush with a curry comb. So I just personally use a rubber curry comb, not, um, not a metal curry comb because that forms part of my grooming kit. And if you've got a really dirty horse, if you dunk your curry comb in some water, every so often it just helps all the grease and the hair stick um even more to the curry comb so it's um that's quite a good a good tip as well so here we've got what i have um so i literally have these we've used um the these brushes are from smart grooming i'm not affiliated um with smart grooming other than the fact that i love i love the brushes that's why i genuinely use them but you can get these kinds of brushes from lots of places so the first one is the rubber curry comb that's brilliant for um, removing the loose mud and the hair and um, but also as to say i use that as my metal curry comb um as well so i'll give them a really good brush with that all over and then the next one is it's a cross between a dandy brush and a flicker brush it's not it's not hard and coarse like a dandy brush it's still quite soft but you can see it's a lot longer the bristles are a lot longer so you can flick um the the hair and the mud and the dust away from the horse away from the coat um and when i brush so if i'm on the right hand side of the horse so the opposite side to the one that you would mount from i use my right hand to brush so my body, it's all about how your body is. So you can really get your, um, get the long strokes. And if I'm on the left hand side, so the side that you mount from, I use the, um, the brush with my left hand. And it just means you can really get, um, get in there and get the coat. Um, so I'll, I'll rub a curry comb and then I'll use the bigger, um, a flicky, more of a flicker brush. And then you can see here, we've got um, the next one to the right of that is a body brush. 
again it's not got huge long bristles um, but these are made up of it's they're quite dense but um in the number of bristles but it's still quite soft and um, so that's really good for just getting really into the coat um, and lifting it and then the next one I've got in my kit is a goat hair brush and that's like a polishing brush so that just lifts the grease and the dirt at the end that gives you that final um, final wipe over um, and it really polishes them so if you can still see grease in the coat there's no point in moving to the um, to the goat hair brush you need to repeat process like one so your curry comb and then your um, your more flicker brush and then your body brush um, until you can see but if you do this for 10 minutes a day you will like not believe the difference it's amazing and you, your ponies will be gleaming so we know how to brush so we're going to think about um, organization as well so be organized equals less stress this was not me a few hours ago hence why I've like <laughs> really read at the moment but um, know where you're going it sounds really silly but um, you can kind of think um, oh yeah it's just down the road but unless you've been once or twice and um, especially recently no one's really been anywhere and um, it's very easy to underestimate how long it's going to take you to get there because obviously you're, you're towing or you're in a lorry and um, rather than just driving so calculate what time you need to leave and always give yourself an extra half an hour locate your show equipment I've done that today and I'm carrying a little extra poundage and my show jacket is a little tight but we'll worry about that after tomorrow um, make a list of what you need so a groom once said to me that and I, I really like this as an idea they have um, a laminated list that they write on every show so it's just a tick box and they just tick off what they've got once they've got it so that's quite a good idea just so you don't forget anything I keep referring to food um, I think I maybe have a problem with food because um, I keep talking about it but um, it's it's the last thing you often remember to do on on show days or um, yeah any days that you know you're a little bit stressed but actually you do need to eat and keep your energy um, levels up and no one likes hungry so make sure you pack pack some snacks um, and don't forget your horse's passports because more and more you know people are asking for them and obviously legally we're meant to travel with the passport um like as well so if you're organized the week before um it just gives you it makes the whole experience a lot more enjoyable and i think this is what we have to remember it's supposed to be fun so quick quiz when it comes to plaiting do you like to plait the day before on the day before you leave on the day once you get there or I don't plait at all so we're going to pop a quiz up again there's no right or wrong answer it's just um, something to make sure that you guys aren't falling asleep and to keep that nice and interactive for you um, so I think uh, I think Heidi's going to pop the quiz up for us here we go so uh, I think that's the results one I think we need the one before that there we go oh it was and then it's disappeared again hopefully it'll come back here we go right multiple choice um so as i say there's no right or wrong answers so just choose whichever one is um is most applicable to you and once we've cast our votes we will um have a chat we actually added an extra option in because um yeah on the day when i get there was not not in there um although actually the um the photo on the left is of a friend of mine plaiting up in the lorry once she'd got there so um, it, sh it should have been it should have been in there so uh the day before on the day before i leave on the day when i get there so yeah just you and i don't plait at all so yeah cool uh i tend to if i can plait on the day then i do that but tomorrow i need to leave at half five and i'm not plaiting and um, so those of you that have joined um joined us um yeah will um was saying that i i need to practice what i preach because i have a com my first competition in i don't even know how long it seems like forever um and was not organized but yes i i have plaited um today because i don't fancy getting off at that 
that time. Um, don't forget, guys, if you have got any questions as we're going through, then please do ask. That's what I'm here for. So we're on to plating, which I think is probably um, why a lot of people um, joined as well. So the day before, washing, plating, tack clean, get your stuff together. That's quite a northern way of saying that. Apologies. Um, fuel in your car or lorry and load what you can. So prepare what you can. Um, the more you do the day before, the nicer the experience is on the day. And as I keep saying, it's meant to be fun. Um, so here's, um, this is another friend of mine, Jess, um, Jess Errington, she works for Harry Mead, so um, she's very used to, to turn out. Um, so do you need to bath? Well, I think if you wash, um, so if you brush your horses properly, no, you don't, you don't need to bath. Having said that, there is an exception to every rule. If you have a mud monster, or a grey, then yes, you probably do need to bath, but for greys and chestnuts, liver chestnuts, um, I don't think that you do need to bath. I think that, you know, your pony should be healthy from the inside out and coupled with the brushing techniques that we've um, already discussed, then like, I don't think bathing adds any value at all, um, unless they're grey then you're going to have to bath probably. Um, if we do bath, what do you want to use? Well, you can use um, anything from baby shampoo to fairy liquid. Um, there's lots and lots of products on the market and now, lots of really nice smelling ones. Um, if I've got a grey, I always use a shampoo that's um, got like a purple shampoo. That just really gets, really gets them nice and clean and white. Um, I always wash the legs and the tail Again, we did that the week before, if you remember, um, just to make sure that it's nice and clean for the day. And then hot clothing, we've got the professionals tip. So love, absolutely love to hot cloth. Apologies, I just pressed that soon. So hot clothing, for those of you that don't know, is when you get um, really, really hot water and then get like a microfiber like the one in the, um, in the picture. You can put a splash, so if you want to lift grease, then you can add a splash of Dettol. If you want to enhance shine, you can add some baby oil. If you um, want to, I, I quite like, again, using um, a product called Super Shine, which is available from um, Smart Grooming, it's amazing stuff. So just pop a dash in the water and then make sure you really wring out your cloth really well. So it should be almost dry to the touch. You don't want your horse to get wet. You just want the hair and the dirt to stick to it and then you just rub your pony all the way over paying really like extra attention to um like the crest and the shoulders and the quarters and it really lifts the the dirt out um and you will be absolutely amazed so you can see how much dirt is on this um on this cloth here already um and that was just from one side of the this horse that we were brushing so um hot cloth in i would hot cloth every couple of days anyway. Um, the only time I bath my own horses is if they get sweaty. Um, and even then I don't actually use a product. I don't use a shampoo. Sometimes I'll use like a lavender wash, but um, very rarely would I use a shampoo again, unless they're gray. So if you've got a gray, basically ignore everything I'm saying and just invest in some purple shampoo. So plaiting, there's lots of ways um, that we plait. Here's, um, if you want to sew, then there's lots of different colour options. I like a combination um, of, um, of bands and thread, personally. There's no right or wrong way. We're going to talk about um, both, but you can see there we've got the plaiting needles. We've got the scissors that help you pull through um, the bits of hair. We've got plaiting wax, which is um, a product when you are plaiting to keep them in place. And perfect plaits is a bit like a hairspray. And then you'll see we've got the comb on the um, on the left as well, and that's for like separating your your plaits and, and making them perfect. Um, so smart grooming. I keep going on about smart grooming. Apologies, it's just because I'm familiar with their products. And um, they do a lot of wax threads, so they're actually easier to um, to plait with and easier to use because they've got grip and they stay in because they've got a slight wax coating on them. So if you are banding that's quite a good one to, to have. So again, preparation is key. Your mane should be clean and dry before you, uh, before you start. When I plait, I use 
I actually use water. Occasionally I use the wax product if the main is really bad, but you can use wax um, off the shelf if, if you want to. Um, there's lots of really good wax products um, around that help you um, help you to do that. So as you can see from the photo, we've split into sections and these are the important bits. So the, for those of you that have um, joined before, we the week before we made sure our mains were nice and even so they were a nice length for plaiting and a nice length for plaiting is anything between maybe two inches and five inches depending on how um how big you want your plaits and how thick your hair is as well so the one that i've just plaited today it's about two inches but he's got welsh in him so it's quite a thick mane in, in parts so we want to make sure that the mane is as even as possible all the way along. And what I do is split them into sections first. So we're aiming for between like nine and 11 plaits really down the mane and then your forelock makes, um, you know, makes your 10 or your 12. It doesn't really matter unless you're showing. If you can plait for the confirmation as well. So if you've got a horse who has got a really short neck, you want to put more plaits in to give that feeling that it's elongated and again if you've got a horse with a really long neck then you want to put less um, plaits in and um, you'll find that show jumpers tend to put more plaits in than the dressage um, kind of horses and grooms it's just the style and there's loads of different ways of plaiting now there's loads of different tutorials um, uh, Baxter Equine Services, Nikki, she does amazing plaiting and she does lots of tutorials if you fancy a go at posh plaiting but um, for the purpose of this we're just going to talk about regular normal um, normal plaits so we're going to make sure that um, we've got our sections and when you split your sections use your main comb to make sure that you've got a straight line because um, Otherwise, your plaits, no matter how good they are, they look really messy. So you want a nice straight line between each section. So use the tip of your main comb. Of, um, if I use a plaiting comb, uh, sorry, a pulling comb to do that. And just make sure that it's nice and straight. And you want to feel like when you're doing it, you've got a similar amount of hair in each section, because that's obviously going to equate to your, to your plaits. So when you um, start plaiting, you want to either put some water on, so I, I like water, but you can plait with a spray or with a wax. Um, and the key is to split your three, so your section into three even sections and keep your plait tight. OK, if it's loose, when you roll it up, it just it doesn't it looks really um, messy because you can't you can't roll them or fold them um, correctly. Um, so here we've got a we've got a mix of bands and thread so this is how i plait so i plait down <clears throat> so i put the plait in do the end with a band so i do that all the way along the main and then i get a um, the thread and i use the thread to actually put it into the knot okay into the ball so you've got two ways of doing that you can either roll the plait like on the inside of itself so it rolls up or you can fold your plaits and it there's no right or wrong it's um it just depends how you want your plaits sitting so if you've got a horse with quite a weak neck and top line you might want them sitting a little bit closer to the top of the neck and um, on the crest so it gives that um feeling that they're, they're a little bit fuller in the neck um if you want them like this one to sit into the neck um then this one has been rolled so it just it Again, there's no right or wrong, as long as they're all the same and they're all even, it doesn't actually really, um, you know, really matter. So the most common mistakes is trying to plait with a recently washed mane. By recently, I mean like the day before or on the day, um, because the soap just makes it really tricky to get, um, to get the tension that you need to keep your plaits even. Um, if you've got uneven sections as we've just spoke about so they're the bits that you start with you better spend in 10 minutes doing your sections and getting those right um than just kind of thinking oh i'll spend a bit longer rolling if your mane's too thick it can be really tricky to get neat um neat plaits again if your plaits aren't tight enough if you do have like sore hands or arthritic hands you can put gloves on um, like surgical gloves so that you just have a little bit more grip um, in your fingers um, 
and again as we said just watch people online and practice practice when you're not um you know not under pressure um there is no right and wrong way of doing it and um, we just want it to look neat and, and to look even so practice practice i can't wait to be able to show you guys when we're actually allowed to um go to horse fest um so here we've just got so we've got the plating wax i just wanted to show you guys what it looks like it's not a traditional wax it's a stick that you roll um where you, you spread it over the main and it just makes it a little bit stickier so you can grip it easier and also the hairs don't come out the side as often and then here's the technique that we were talking about with the um the cut the needle so when we're threading using thread um you want to obviously get a color that's as close to the main as possible um so the the benefits of using thread instead of bands is that they stay in longer so they're more likely to stay in but they are much harder to get out as well they're a bit of a pain to get out they look neater because you can't see um, the bands as well um, but it is trickier and slightly fiddlier to do so if you're new to plaiting I'd say just go for the bands um, and, and see how you get on with, with them. So here you can see two completely different ways of plaiting. The one on the left we've got loads of small plaits and they, um, they've been folded so if you look really carefully you can see with the bands and they've been folded in on each other and um, it's absolute artwork and um, we we see all these things on on plaiting but we must remember that we don't need them to look pristine like we just want them to look neat and tidy and presentable and your dressage george is not going to award you an extra 10 percent because your plaits are nice okay so don't get too hung up over it and um, you can see the one on the the right it's got a lot less plaits in that would be more like how i was going to plait um, and they've been rolled and they're using thread okay so there is no right or wrong um answer the one on the left will have taken a long time to achieve and the one on the right is probably once you get quite good at it 15 20 minutes and um, so we don't need to spend ages plaiting but equally you know enjoy it so once we've got a plaits on um, if we do this the day before, we're going to use a nice lycra hood, which obviously is very fetching. Um, when these first came out on the market, I was like, really, I am not putting my horse in a hood. But having had lots of plaits um, fall out, being rubbed out, covered in shavings, covered in straw, I now am fully embrace a, a little bit of lycra for the ponies. So, um, if you are doing that, it is a worthwhile investment if you are plaiting the day before. Um, oil the feet before they go to bed. Okay, so once you've done your tail and leg washing, put um, oil on the feet so it can dry before they go to bed. And oiling the feet the day before gives you a really nice base covering um, to top up on the day. And it just gives a much nicer, nicer look. As I said, don't put a dirty rug on. It sounds um, it sounds obvious, but actually, if you look at the inside of any rugs, um, you know, of course, they get dirty. But if you just put a summer sheet um, underneath your your normal rug, then it just stops your horse getting getting dirty. Um, I always plait forelocks and tails on the day because I don't want them to rub. Um, I read somewhere when I was little that horses get headaches with forelock plaits in. I have no idea if this is true, but um, I don't want my horse to get a headache, so I never ever um, plait their forelock until until the day, and the same with the tails because they can be quite sensitive on the um, yeah on the dock. Whereas I kind of think, well, if I had a French plait in my hair, I'd be fine, but if it was stuck here on my forehead, I might think differently. So um, yeah, I think I think sometimes I'm I'm too nice as well, but it's again personal preference. So question time. I've done a lot of talking at you guys. Um, so please ask some questions. We've still got a few more slides to go, um, but I thought we might like to break it up. So if anyone's got a question, you can pop it in your little Q&A button. Um, yeah, it is a button I think that you've got on your, your screen. I said there's no such thing as a daft question. We're all here um, to learn so you can yeah, ask me anything, uh, anything that you like. Everyone's very quiet tonight. I wonder if Thea or Heidi have got any questions and if everyone's going to be really quiet. 
if any of you guys got a question oh we do have a question here we go so i might have missed this but how do you start the thread when sewing fabric you use a knot yeah heather sorry i should have said that so um there's two ways of doing it you can get individual um bits of thread for each plait so yeah use a knot um i like to to band them first to find that easier and then you can put your knot through where your platin band is at the bottom and then go into your plait and then round one way and round the other way um or some of the um other grooms i don't do this technique but some of the other grooms have one long bit of thread um and they start oh apologies that's the dog um they start at the top and then um and then keep the same bit of thread and continue that down and use the same bit of thread for each plait so you don't need to use the knot you just run the thread across where the um where the sections are so hopefully that answers um answers the question fiona says natives and hairy cobs do you like with them the night before yeah i do um so traditionally with your natives and hairy cobs that have got your long mane i would still plait the mane down but in much bigger um, so you get that nice kind of wavy um, look. People think that, you know, with your natives and your hairy cobs that you don't need to look after the manes, but it's the same with us. You still do need to make sure that you, you know, you cut away any dead bits um, and keep on top of them lots and lots of oil in there as well. Um, so I wouldn't probably put a hood on if they weren't plaited because you wouldn't want to rub the hair, but I would plait maybe six or seven kind of looser plaits down um and then you get that nice kind of wave through it you don't want them too tight you don't want them to look like um a, a like they've been crimped like we did in the i can't remember what decade that was many years ago but um it just gives a nice a nice wave so hopefully that's answered that for you fiona charlotte says for a young horse that can't cope with a main pull can you use a solo um comb to thin it i'm not sure how to tame so absolutely charlotte we um we did a webinar um, a few weeks ago, um, which you can have access to. You can still go back and watch that from Horse Fest. But absolutely, I'm a great, great believer um, that pulling is not the only option. With that, um, I've got a horse who is not my horse, but a friend's horse who loves this maybe um, pulled. But I've got a mare who absolutely hates it. So I use. Um, the rakes actually solo combs are great as well um i use the um the tail and the main rakes and it just takes the hair out and then it's kind of neaten it up with thinning scissors um it does it takes a lot of the thickness out charlotte but it's not um kind of it's not going to be as effective as pulling so what i would do is just pull literally th maybe three or four tiny sections every time you ride um or just when they're eating or something just tiny tiny ones so over the course of a week you've actually started to thin it um or a, a licket is a really good thing so the they're not actually called licket sorry charlotte them um the molasses licks horse licks ones they're amazing at just giving your horse a bit of um a distraction if you like and it just even if it gave you three or four minutes just to be able to do that um then absolutely um, yeah have a look at that webinar Charlotte and if you've got any questions if you just get back to the horse tribe people then we're absolutely delighted to, to um, help you with that as well. Hey, uh, I've got one more question as well I've, I posted a picture of my new pony which has a mane that has a centre part in um, at the moment <laughs> he needs lots of thinning but I'm wondering if your horse's mane goes to the wrong side do you plait it on the wrong side? <laughs> well <laughs> Right. Well, there's no right or wrong answer, as we know, at horse try. But if my horse had a mane on the wrong side, I would have to tame it to the right side. I don't have any OCD, but I do have a real thing about manes being on the wrong side. Um, if you were happy with it on the wrong side, then I would say you should treat it as if it's on the wrong side. So pull it on the wrong side, plait it on the wrong side. Um, unless you're showing, in which case the judges will be mortified. But I would um, probably train it over to the right side rather than 
to kind of keep it on the wrong side but that's just my my personal um preference um heather has asked as well when you plait the tail how far down should you plait um from the sides i think a good two-thirds of the dock um again it's a it's dependent on confirmation um as well if you want a horse to look like it's got a nice um peachy bomb then you want to probably plait a little bit further um a little bit further down than um than you would do normally i would aim for about two thirds of um of the of the dock similar to when you you know you would pull it as well so I definitely don't go down um definitely don't go down to the bottom um but yeah that would be that would be that so we will move on with uh we've got more chance for questions at the end as well guys i love that you're having uh, having a good chat so this is this is fab you can see here uh here's me saying practice what i preach about um um yeah about preparation and organization and if you look closely at the horse that i'm uh, riding here you can actually see that he has a hogged mane so <laughs> and he was bathed twice in purple shampoo so again like i should practice what i preach and uh, there was a lot of brushing involved in mr charles but there was um there was definitely some help with some whitening shampoo as well i can assure you uh, so let's move on to the next so we've got tack cleaning hacks uh, so when you do your bridle, make sure you remember where your bridle goes. So as in like your cheek pieces and um, it, your nose band and everything else. Um, and also once you've finished cleaning your bridle, make sure that it doesn't have any like awful soap left in um, in the holes. Uh, I've put bits in the dishwasher. If, you, if you're watching this with your partner, then maybe just turn the volume off um, for a minute. But if you've got any like bits in your... Um, stirrups and you have a dishwasher i suggest when your other half is not in but pop them in the dishwasher because they come out amazing and they're like totally gleaming so that's a little um time saving tip but obviously i am not taking any responsibility for any arguments um over that at all um i do wash my bit religiously every time i use it so i kind of think well it's probably not going to be very nice if it's got crusty bits on for my pony so um it, they never take long but um yeah give them a good a good wash um if your tack's quite greasy and at this time of year it quite often is because horses changing coats there's always a little bit more grease there um just use quite hot water and put a little bit of washing up liquid in there as well but make sure your towel dry so the more water you use the more water you need to get off otherwise it can make your tack a little um a bit crusty so we don't want that for shows i always use a cleaner um I don't even know what you say. I think it's glycerine. Well, it's glycerine or glycerine, but anyway, the stuff that makes it shiny because it it always looks quite nice. Um, on a day to day basis, I use a tack cleaner that's got like a conditioner in it as well, like a two in one. Um, I don't take my tack apart every time um, that I ride, but I do give it a wipe over most of the time that I ride because it's just so easy to keep on top of it. Then rather than thinking, oh, I've got to, you know spend an hour washing. Um, you know washing my bit and doing my tack um i've put don't buff on the inside of your boots you may think that this is um quite obvious but you will be amazed a it makes them squeaky and b um it makes them really shiny and the reason that i'm laughing is because my little boy who is an absolute superstar he's nine and he loves helping and um, we were getting ready for a lesson and he said oh i'll um, i'll give you um boots a bit of a clean mom and i was like oh thanks that'd be really good and they came back and these boots were gleaming i was like wow that's amazing anyway i put my boots on and i got on and i was like something feels a bit weird and i started to trot and i was like oh i thought my lower leg was a little more secure than this and it started to squeak and i was like what have you put on and he put super shine which is um it is basically like the shiniest, silkiest. It's like mane and tail conditioner on like times ten, and it was awful. So I was like, "Oh well." Anyway, bless him. We didn't do it on purpose, but I had to concentrate very hard all lesson. So don't go to a show with the inside of your boots um, shiny and slippery because you might need to to cling on a bit. So again, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, other things to remember: so you want to make sure that you've got um, your competition wear looked out, um, any numbers that you might need, so bridal numbers, 
um, clean saddle pads, boots, whips, whatever um, it is that you need. Cooling off equipment, so your hay nets. Um, I've said hay nets because we were taught many years ago that you shouldn't feed your horse before riding, whereas now they're saying, um, you know, that horses are not designed to have an empty stomach. So actually, you know, they're trickle grazers by nature. Um, and by having an empty stomach, it means all the gastric acid um, swaps around on the inside. And, we, and that's obviously bad um, and it can cause ulcers. So do make sure that they do have like a hay net and a pick, um, just a pick of something. The horse's passport again, fuel. I don't know about you, but I haven't been to the petrol station a few times with um, the trailer on the back is quite quite exciting so do get it the day before if you if you can and again snacks for once you're finished even if you know if you don't eat before you ride on competition day you're bound to be starving and especially at the moment where not everything's open um yeah you want to enjoy you know your your day not feeling like you're you're hungry and i'm sure whoever's with you doesn't want you to be hungry um as well so it's show day. I've said don't panic. Hopefully um, you guys in, enjoy your show day or your clinic day, whatever it is you might be going to. Give yourself lots of time. Um, it sounds really silly, but there's nothing worse than panicking that you're going to be late because then you, you're stressed and you're already on a bad, um, you know, the wrong foot, if you like. I've said drink tea, um, basically keep hydrated, but take a you know a flask of tea with you and things like that and and just enjoy it and don't forget to breathe um you know sometimes we forget why we put ourselves through um through this but actually it's really good to just take it all in um uh, yeah enjoy it uh oh apologies i'm pressed the wrong button there that could have been awful if i'd been looking at something terrible uh, so you've got use your time wisely. So this is on this is on show day. Um, so you want to do the jobs that are going to take the most time first. So by that I mean um, drying. So any legs or tails that need rewashing, um, you're going to need to do that first so that they can have lots of time to dry. Um, bandages and so, so stable bandages with wraps instead of boots keep legs cleaner for traveling because they love to poo down um, poo down the legs if you've got a really um, excitable traveler then you might want to use two tail bandages so a normal tail bandage for the top and then a second tail bandage to bandage the tail all the way down to the bottom and that just stops any uh, mess getting on it and traveling um, we've got here plait the forelock um, and the tail if you needed and thoroughly brush so remember to kind of work backwards so you want to do your washing first and um, once you've washed you want to make sure that you put the bandages on so that and then not going to get really dirty um, and then obviously plait your forelock and tail here we've got another picture of some amazing plaits you, your plaits do not need to look like this this is just an example of beautiful um beautiful plaiting and um, you just want them to look you know presentable but we want our horses to be that shiny so we want to thoroughly brush them and then we're going to use some polish or super shine in the tail obviously before we put the the tail bandage on um use baby oil or super shine for hot clothing make sure that if you use baby oil um it's not a hot sunny day you don't want them to obviously burn the skin um wipe the eyes and the nose again don't wipe the nose especially with pink noses with anything that's oil base because um that they'll get burnt and i've said obviously let them eat um again put a clean rug on them once you've you've done all that um a clean head collar there's nothing worse than washing a horse's head and then like realizing when you get there you take the head collar off they've actually got a head collar like shape of um dirt left on their faces and you're like oh no <laughs> um we didn't actually talk about washing faces um if you've got white on your face i would always wash the um the face the day before just the white bits on there if they don't then i just hot cloth um the face i use really really dilute shampoo so i wouldn't use it as a strength as i would on the um legs just in case it gets in the eyes and again like the nose and the whiskers are quite sensitive so um i would just use a dilute one for um for that and i use a sponge personally i don't um use a hose pipe on the um on the heads quite happily to hose the mane and up to the pole from the 
the neck but um most of them won't tolerate it and I probably wouldn't tolerate it if someone was trying to do that to me either so um yeah lots of products that you can um use to help obviously with the with the shine so here we've got reapply the oil to the feet um so you want to do that quite soon after you've done done the legs so that it gets time to dry and then you're not obviously putting them back into a stable that's got shavings or straw until um it's dry you can use if you've got really black feet you can use black um boot polish and then seal it with baby oil and that keeps it really really black um i've just said like let it dry before going near any any bedding um i would always oil feet before i leave and then reapply oil once i get there if if needed so there's lots of different oils there's oils there's greases there's um creams there's you want one that's basically shiny um for for the job that we're doing and in, in terms of of turnout there's loads on the market um i just put this one up because i got access to their photo library which i thought was quite quite cool um so other tips and products um we've got baby wipes baby wipes are brilliant always have a pack of baby wipes in your um in your competition bag because they just they're great for just taking slobber off bits or if there's a bit of snot or a bit of eye bogies or anything like that um it's brilliant we've got makeup for black points so really that's if you're um if you're showing um and you want to enhance like the features but you know you can use there is all these things available to you um again super shine. you think that i'm like i should have shares with super shine it actually um is amazing stuff i just put a tight like a, a couple of drops on my hands and then just run my hands over the hocks and the knees and the quarters um after you've hot cloth then it just really gives um a lovely kind of shiny finish on the bits that move and the bits that that glisten so we want um we want to kind of make them look uber shiny and then spray on chalk i only found this product a few years ago i did not know it existed my god it's amazing if you've got horses with white legs invest in some spray on chalk it is fantastic um you literally just spray it on and um give it a little brush and that's it it's done there's lots of products for chalk and um, products that you leave on um like the night before and then brush off and lots and lots like pastes and things like that um so you can have a look around we used to have like chalk blocks and they were terrible but spray on chalk definitely it wins my um my vote at the moment so a quick quiz do you use quarter marks yes no i'm not sure what they are so again there's no right or wrong answer so you can cast your cast your votes so has everyone voted feels like um, one of these multiple choice at school doesn't it so yes no oh good a split um so basically um I personally don't I don't do showing anymore so I tend not to use quarter marks but they can look really really um like quite smart and they really enhance the horse um so they're they're meant to basically enhance the bum to enhance the shape um you can do them with stencils so they've like cut out bits or free you can do them free hands like this lady is here um you can use spray on them so we've got like a quarter mark spray it's just pretty much like a hairspray that holds it in place um, or you can use water and all you do is comb the hair in the opposite direction um, a lot of sharks teeth were were quite the rage for a while so you just brush the hair in opposite directions to create the teeth but just have a play around with them if your horse has got a really poor weak back end you probably don't want to draw like attention to it um, but sometimes it's quite fun ones as well like we had the Wilbury ones a couple of years ago which were really cool um, and it's just nice to be able to have um have them on if if you want but you do yeah a spray is definitely helpful to hold them in place and um, but you can do them with water if you've got a really thick coat they don't work very well they're much better um in summer um because they tend just to stay in, in place a little bit more but that would be one of your final kind of things once you were there if um, if you did want to add add your quarter marks um so take home tips we've got practice give yourself lots of time and um, so the day before and on the day i know and we don't always have lots of time but 
and um, the quicker you know the more you do it the quicker you'll get um remember it's fun don't get too stressed it doesn't matter if your plaques aren't, aren't perfect your horse doesn't care um and they're probably still going to have a good time and just enjoy spending time you know with with your horse um I've got here, this is a picture of me many years ago when I was looking a little bit younger. Um, I actually did a um, a YouTube video for the British grooms about platting. And this was my my horse, um, Angel, who unfortunately lost a colic shortly after this was taken. But um, it still makes me it still makes me smile, this picture. Um, she was a perfect kind of patient. But you can um, you can see there that. You know those plaits they're nice and they're neat but they're not you know they're not like the the chestnut that we saw before that had about 50 plaits in and, and looked like artwork you know these are practical we're going to go out we're going to do some um jumping or dressage and and have a bit of fun um so yeah don't get too don't get too hung up and this is your final question time so if anyone got any questions then now is your time um to to ask oh that's gone back to you. oh sorry guys here we go this i'm like same question time and then i'm like skipping it on oh here we go we have a question uh it's not no so heather says might be a silly question do you use quarter marks on a colored absolutely um i would use your um quarter marks if you can more on the um the brown or the black bits just because they stand out more rather than on the gray um you know the white bits but absolutely um so it depends on where your markings are so you might want to do some kind of checker squares on on the top of the bum if that's where the markings are if they're near the stifle then you might think shark's teeth are a little bit um easier to um to do that so yeah absolutely you can anyone else got any questions and um, what's best oh that, that's a really good question what's best to use on stripy feet um something clear uh, because even though you won't get the the rich blackness um if you put black um tinted then um obviously that's going to look a little bit dodgy on your your clear one so yeah i would always use a clear um either an oil or um like a, uh, any yeah anything that's designed for for clear like a solid i quite like the solid two foils uh, Lynn says, I have a grey. <laughs> I had a grey once too, Lynn. Uh, what suggestions do you have to make his coat shine like a bay? Um, yeah, you are up against it a bit, Lynn, but they do shine. So um, I'm not sure if you saw all the bits on the brushing. Like, I really believe it doesn't matter what colour of horse you have, like, they will um, shine with, with brushing. Um, so it's just a combination of using the right kind of brushes. Um, if you go back to to the start um if you missed it uh, basically we're using a rubber curry comb and then like a flicky dandy brush followed by a body brush followed by a goat hair brush and um yeah my greys shine as well um i totally agree there's nothing more amazing than a really smart gray horse that is absolutely gleaming um so yeah, I would I would do that. And lots of hot cloth in as well, um, Lynn, just to get the all the grease and any hair out of there. Fiona says, how do you use a white paste the night before? Um, so you get paste that you literally paint on with like a hoof oil brush and then you just leave it on. It's like, um, you know, when you break your arm and you get those plaster casts, it looks like you're painting your horse's legs with that and you just leave it to dry and then you brush it off um, the next day no idea if you know how it works but um but it works um i personally don't use the white paste um i like to use the purple shampoos the the day before and then use the spray chalk if it, if i need to sometimes i will wash white legs um the morning of as well depending on what they what they look like after the night in the stable um but that is how you use um that I think we're uh, done for the questions. So on our next slide, uh, we have got here, because we've spoke about smart grooming so much. Um, and again, I'm not just saying they're amazing. They really, it really is. Um, here's your, your product code, but um, Thea and Heidi will be able to tell you a little bit more about when it's valid 
um, to but maybe get a, a pen and paper and write that down or take a, a screenshot or a picture on your phone. It's rather to the end of the month, so you've got a little bit of time to have a browse through. So on the first webinar, they covered the tidying and trimming for us, and this time it's all the turnout products. So it will be clear when you go on their website which ones you've got the 10% off. And that certainly, uh, I think a couple of people from the first webinar, including me, bought some tidying and trimming bits. So I'm going to have a little go with those uh, this weekend. Liz, I'll try and remember to do before and after. I forgot when I did my main, but I'm going to have a go at the tail <laughs> this weekend because Johnny's a bit like <laughs> everywhere. His mane, his mane is still like Mohican, even though I've thinned it, but that's just him, I think. <laughs> It does take a while to get them uh, get them trained. Yeah, you have to keep have to keep on. It's the slow burner, the <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah, and I don't think Chuck's mail will ever be trained. <laughs> it's big, sounds it's like, isn't it? It sounds like, like a challenge. <laughs> big um, so I just before we talk about the the last kind of the next webinars that are coming up. Um, just an apology to those people who struggled to get on. Um, that was um, a hands up. It was done entirely down to us. Um, there's a setting on Zoom that had changed and that I hadn't clicked to correct. So huge apologies. Look out for an email um, with an apology and an, an offer for a, another free uh, webinar. So for those of you that, that struggled to get on, massive apologies. I hope I didn't spoil it too much. And also you'll be able to see the beginning um, when we put it onto the website over the weekend. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to re-watch anything that you missed. Yeah, and also um, Liz is going to write up her tips um, in the next few days. So sometime next week we'll get out an article for you so you can read through, you can watch again, and you've got the notes as well to keep referring back to and, and have a go, which is always handy. So uh, look out for that too. So um, just to let you know, the next couple of webinars that are coming up. So some of you may have joined us for the first Sue Dyson webinar, which was back in April. And um, the second of four that she's doing for us is on the 27th of May, so a couple of weeks time. She's um, world renowned and is absolutely lovely as well. So she's brainy, incredibly experienced, and she's really, really lovely and really wants to answer lots of your questions about how to recognize lameness. It's a passion for Sue to make sure that we can all spot not just obvious lameness, but subtle lameness, because if we can spot it early enough, we can get our um, horse treated as soon as possible and give them a vastly improved chance of recovery uh, and much improved prognosis. So have a look out for that uh, web webinar coming up soon. And then the next one is in June, which is D. Soyolo. She made me practice it and I'm still rubbish at pronouncing it. Um, D is, again, super lovely. It's a common theme of all our experts because they are so nice and so happy to answer questions. So Dee's a really experienced sports therapist and she's worked with lots of different uh, combinations of horse and rider, um, everyday questions like ourselves and uh, top athletes um, at the top of uh, top of the tree in terms of uh, equestrianism. And she's going to talk about the basics of rider fitness. I think we could probably all do with a little bit more fitness. I did my first one day event with Johnny a couple of weekends ago and I was huffing and puffing. So I'm really looking forward to this one to find out what I should be doing. Um, she's going to give us tips for warming up and hands up, Heidi and I both don't warm up. So we really need, we really need to do this, don't we? We creak a little bit more these days. So we really need to warm up. Uh, body awareness and the, and the importance of posture when riding and the impact on your horse. So a couple of really great webinars coming up, so look out for those. And you could choose to have those as your um, free coupon from tonight as an apology if you'd like to. Ah, I think that just remains for us to say a huge thank you to Liz and a huge thank you for everyone for joining us, your amazing questions. Absolutely. Thanks, Liz. Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, for, for seeing us, being here tonight. Oh, yeah. Thank you once again for having me. And I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, if you do have any other questions, you can always get in touch with us because we're here to help.
Super. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, See you guys. Everybody. Bye. Bye.